Welcome to Feisty Chess. I played some shorter games, and I wanted to select one of those to show. It's the Riga variation of the Rui Lopez. So I was black, um, playing a 10-minute game here against a higher-rated opponent. And um, this player went into the Rui Lopez. So here we go. Of course, at this point, white has a choice between a wide variety of moves. Um, Bishop b5, the Rui Lopez being the most popular, especially the higher up you get. Um, I play a6 and um, knight f6. These are the main line moves in the Rui Lopez. White castles. And in doing so, he's leaving that e pawn open to capture. But if white knows what he's doing, it's not a problem. This is, this is a book move. Knight takes e4. I like to play it. It's called the open variation. Most people here would play the closed Rui Lopez with bishop to e7 which is a very different sort of game. Um, if you like fast and loose chess with an open um, open board, lots of tactics and sharp features, then uh, the open Rui Lopez might be for you. And most white players know, uh, at this level, they know that d4 is the best move, not, not rook to e1 here. Rook to e1 looks like the most immediate way to get this pawn back. Um, Actually, most players will play d4, and this is um, technically more accurate, but this does give black the opportunity to um, play the Riga variation, which looks like you're just unaware of what white is trying to do here. And you just say, okay, another pawn, I will take it. So this is the Riga variation when you, when you take on d4. Now, rook e1 is the book move, and here we'll play a few book moves. This is a pretty forcing and forced line. So right now, white needs, black needs to play d5 to defend the knight. This pins the other knight, though, on c6. So now, black's next move is natural. Knight takes d4. He's got one pawn back. Um, black is still up a single pawn. But the problem is... Uh, there's major threats on c6. So knight takes c6 is a big threat. And if I recapture, then, then the bishop is going to take on c6, forking both my king and my rook. So that's unappealing. But on top of that, on top of that, there's a threat of f3, since my knight is now pinned. And since this knight has moved from f3, black can, can play f3. Uh, the best move in the position does nothing about either of these threats. That's why this is a, a fun line, and I like it so much. Um, black has to play bishop d6 here. Doesn't do anything about the pin on the knight. Doesn't do anything about c6. Um, and this is where my opponent went, went wrong. The best move here for white is knight to c6. And let me walk you through the variation. Knight takes c6. Now, instead of recapturing a knight and just falling for this fork, losing a rook, the point of bishop d6 is that black can go, bishop takes h2, check. And if, if white should take, black has an easy perpetual check. Queen h4, check. King has one move. And now we check on f2. The king will go to the h file. We just we just ladder, rinse, and repeat until we have our draw. This is why. Um, and and once once black takes once white takes that bishop, black has nothing better than a draw. So the Riga variation is good against higher rated players, or if you're if you're comfortable with a draw. Uh, if white knows what he's doing, he can at least get this draw. And at this point, you have to take the draw. There's nothing better because these nasties are coming. Um, Again, you haven't done anything about these threats. So actually the main move here is king to h1. I played an opponent who played king to f1 here, and I faltered and did not get the right move in response. At this point, if I remember right, let's see if my training has done anything here. Uh, Queen f6 looks natural, but maybe not fast enough. Queen h4, I think, is the right move here. 
And the computer should say that was best. It also watches over e4, and it, of course, targets f2. Um, queen d4 is the recommended move here. But notice the computer likes black better here. Um, because now we can castle, and this takes care of both of these threats. Interesting. It's a wild game. It's still a wild game, but black should have a winning advantage if, it, if it's played right. In my game, however, my, my first game on this channel where I played the Riga variation, that's what happened, and I did not follow through in the right manner. I ended up losing that game. Um, okay, let's... And we're not looking at F3 here. We're looking at knight takes C6 it takes h2 what if what if white goes to h1 this is the main move now the queen comes here and white has to do something about these threats um the only move for white is rook takes e4 and after we recapture really the only move for black again white just has a single move Queen to d8, check. So we end up with this forced continuation I have to take. Now knight takes, because you don't want to be down a queen. And we grab the knight, because we're in check. And now black can grab, sorry, white can grab our bishop on h2. And here's what we've got. Um, black has two more pawns. And white has the bishop pair and, and two pieces, really, for, for a rook. So it's it's imbalanced for sure, um, but the computer likes white quite a bit better here. That bishop pair probably counts for a lot in this position. So, but I, I'm actually comfortable. I, I have I've played the Riga a few times. I've tried to get to this position, but none of my white opponents ever know this line. <laughs> I think they don't under, they don't even expect that um, the Riga variation is possible. That that e takes e four by black back on this move is a thing. So they're not ready. They're not ready for this variation and they don't know the, the forcing line. Famous game by Capablanca where he um, took apart the Riga variation in that main line I just showed you in that queenless middle game with that interesting material imbalance. But in the right hands it can be dangerous and Black's plans, what I like about it is Black's plans in that position with his, with his two rooks and his extra pawns are pretty simple. Let's make some pass pawns and let's Let's try to trade off White's Rook for one of ours and see if we can't make some promotion threats going up the board. Anyway, here's what happened in, in the game I played yesterday. White played, sorry, okay, back, back here. Instead of taking on c6 with a knight, White played f3. And this is a mistake, as the computer says. And I found the best move against it. Again, queen to h4, very natural and key theme to remember in the Riga variation. Um, so now Black, white doesn't have time to take with the knight because we're making threats on h2. We've got bishop takes h2. And now the king can go to f1 and get mated on f2. Or he can go to h1 and try to survive this kind of thing. Yeah, bishop g3 check, king g1, just take on e1, black, white, black can even ignore the threats on the knight and, and this business here. So, instead, I took with the bishop to take with check, and the computer somehow likes this best. I take back, and now the computer likes just taking on f4, but white instead played h3 to try to defend against these mate threats. Now I get my queen to f2, supported by that knight, king h1, the only move, and now I, I should have found bishop takes h3 right here. Um, because my bishop, if, if he takes, 
Now, I'm threatening a mate on g2, and if he takes this bishop, there's a mate on h2, because the queen can now come to h2. Back that by this bishop and just give mate. Um, this gets another piece into the attack. White probably has to play. Well, it says rook takes e4 is forced, but this might be a natural looking move. Uh, but then queen g3, and there's nothing to be done about this mate because of the battery of the queen and bishop. Instead of finding takes h3, I played queen back here, threatening the mate on h2 directly. But then white found this nice move, f3, sorry, f4. So I took on f4, wait, I'm sorry, not just yet. I, I castled to try to release this pin on my knight, uh, activate that knight. Still, again, bishop takes h3 would be, would be very good. Let's look at that line in this position. Bishop takes h3. Now what if pawn takes? Queen takes, check. Queen g3, king h1, oh, and we've got a mate. We don't have a mate. We need to unpin our knight for that. The knight would really want to jump to f2 and give checkmate here from where it pinned. Bishop to c5 instead. This looks much less clear to me. I simply castled. The computer says it's a mistake, but you look at the evaluation and black is still in the commanding lead. This is a game-winning mistake, and it makes my task much simpler since now my knight is threatening things. And I think bishop h3, bishop e3 is a tries to guard f2, this fork on f2, and develop a piece, so it makes sense. Because I was threatening this knight takes knight to f2 fork of the king and queen now that I've unpinned my knight. But now uh, let's see, I go for bishop takes f4. Once again, bishop bishop takes h3 still works. Despite that f4 pawn blocking that diagonal. Now bishop takes f4. And now if bishop takes f4, this bishop is overworked. It's got to it's gotta try to guard this mate here, but also... If it, go, if it takes on f4, you see the mate. The knight comes here and mates. If the bishop tries to guard both, this is kind of fun. If the bishop tries to guard both, you can just give this fork here anyway. And if the bishop takes, we're mating. Actually, look at this. No, mate in two. Mate in two is better. <laughs> okay. Instead, I went for bishop takes f4, and then black played bishop takes f4. Queen takes f4 is a mistake. I should have gone for the fork immediately. Hmm. It's not that big of a mistake. I mean, it's three points of an evaluation, but I'm still five points ahead. Still threatening that fork on f2. Um, white brings the king over to try to avoid that fork. An interesting choice. And now I get my queen to f2 once again. And now bishop takes f2. H, h3 is finally played. Um, Black's best move here would be to try to defend with the queen to f3, funny enough. Um, at which point we can simply take the rook. King to h2. Bishop to g4, huh? Queen takes g4. Knight f2. Hmm. Bold stuff. I would have simply got my bishop back to safety, but either way, black is just crushing. But instead of finding any clever computer type defenses, white just took. And now the point is the knight comes to g3 with the same kind of mate, just kind of flipped on its axis. So that's the kind of fun stuff that can happen in the Riga variation. It's also a good lesson of why it's good to play, um, at my level anyway, to play offbeat openings, 
if you're not playing grandmasters who know all the different kinds of tricks and traps and openings, if, you, if you're not playing top level competition that, that knows the best lines, it's just good to get people out of their opening books. And the Riga variation, as I said, it's uh, if white knows what he's doing, he can force a draw just by taking on h2 and that bishop takes h2 line we looked at earlier. So um, it's a risk if you're playing as black and you want to win. You shouldn't play the Riga variation. But if you're playing lower rated opposition, then they probably don't know all this stuff. And you'd, this, you'd be hard pressed to figure this stuff out over the board. So thought I'd share um, my successful game with the Riga variation. Maybe I'll play this again in one of my slow games um, that I'll put on here. But thought I'd throw out a shorter video and hope, hope somebody out there enjoyed learning about the Riga variation. Stay feisty, folks. See ya.